Starfield's a big freaking deal, right? I think we can all agree on that. And it's not just because it's a big game or because it got a ton of hype. It's because there's a lot of stuff that you can't do in other games in this game. Bethesda games just hit different. They're in a class of their own, and Starfield is obviously the highest stakes of all of them yet. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 things you can only do in Starfield. Starting off with number 10, dropping 10,000 milk cartons. See what I mean? All right, so one of the best things about Bethesda games is messing around with console commands. And when you combine the ability to generate thousands of items on a whim with the game's physics engine, you get something magical. Credit for this idea goes to Denios, who did something incredibly basic, but extremely entertaining nonetheless. They climbed on top of the mast building and dropped 10,000 milk cartons all at once. Starfield just lets you do that. And even better, it automatically generates the items in a grid, so the results are spectacular. It will absolutely kill your FPS if you got settings turned up to maximum, but it's a hell of a sight to see. To get the most out of this absolute milk carton apocalypse, use the anti-gravity field power just as they hit the ledge and you get a super slow motion shower of these things. I couldn't stop with just milk cartons, so I tried a few other things. 10,000 Vasco is kind of a bust. NPCs don't automatically start to ragdoll when you cheat them in. And having that many robots in the same cell was causing the game to go nuts. But 10,000 old PCs worked perfectly. Just look at them fly. So bulky, yet so majestic. And number nine is getting jettisoned off a ship. This is kind of a glitch more than an actual thing, but it's pretty awesome nonetheless. From time to time, you're exploring planets and you'll see a ship landing in the distance. Sometimes they're friendly, most of the time they're not. But if you time things right, you can get in the cargo bay before the ship starts flying away. It's not supposed to happen, as you'll soon see, but it's not all that hard to trigger. If you want to see this glitch for yourself, don't bother hoping in vain the ship will show up randomly. Just play the mission Ground Pounder, and at the end of it, there's always a ship that lands with space or reinforcements it's the perfect target for trying out this trick just kill all the enemies inside the cargo hold then jump inside until the ship leaves it's that simple sometimes it doesn't work and the ship just sits there forever so make a backup save but if it does you'll enjoy a bumpy ride for a few seconds and watch the bodies ragdoll like crazy before you get unceremoniously ejected from the ship before it takes off in space credit to this goes to bulwark hd it's hilarious and fun to do even if you're unlikely to survive the encounter if it's not the fault that kills you it's the sudden stop at the end And number eight, go on a spacewalk. Uh, you can fly around in space wherever you want in your ship, but have you ever wanted to just jump out, you know? I don't really think uh, a lot of these uh, space games let you do that, weirdly enough. And you can do that in this game, at least on PC. There's no way to exit your ship normally, but with a console command, you can send your little dude out of your ship, and you can tumble through the infinite abyss of space. And thing is, if you just leave the ship, if that's all you do, you're still gonna experience gravity because it's a Bethesda game, and and it's not designed for this, but it is designed for you to mess with it. So you just gotta disable gravity. There you go. Yeah, it's kind of surreal floating around all by yourself, but it works fine. And you, yeah, no, you can't really interact with anything. You just clip through asteroids or space stations. There's not really a lot you can do out there except for enjoying the scenery. Or uh, hey, better yet, why not uh, cheat a bunch of milk cartons in? Space Scumbag did the milk cartons in space, appropriately. And I wasn't able to make anything quite as beautiful as what he accomplished, but it's a fun little diversion. At number seven is pull Sarah's hair. Uh, exactly what it sounds like. For whatever reason, Bethesda made it so that certain characters' hair physics can be interacted with. In this case, it means that whenever you want, you can hold A with a controller and E with a keyboard to grab Sarah's hair and mess with it. It's pointless. There is, there is nothing to do with this. But hey, look at that hair flop around. Not just the left-hand side either. You can grab the little strand on the right-hand side too. Credit goes to the Galactic Cat. 
Cactus on this one, which Reddit usernames gotta say they've been on point for this one so far. Keep up the good work, guys. In this case, the good work is about as useless as you can get, but it's stuff like this that makes Bethesda games Bethesda games. Not always in perfect shape. I mean, a lot of it's not even intentional, but who cares? It's fun. At number six is stealing credits the smart and fun way. Posted by Mr. Jasing, which please understand I'm pronouncing like that out of my own incompetence and not out of malice. But I had to try this one out. The NPCs in Starfield are notoriously touchy about their stuff. You take stuff, it's a big no-no. Even touching things, it'll set them off. So that makes doing something like robbing these gamblers in the Red Mile fairly tricky. There's all these cred sticks just sitting out in the open, but no way to take them without everybody pulling pulling a gun on you. That's why you gotta think outside the box. You gotta go for a whole new paradigm. Stealing those credits has to be done the smart way. Instead of doing anything like touching them, which is super obvious, grab a basket, put it on the ground, then get a slightly heavy physics object and slide the credits off of the table. With some finesse, the credits will go into the basket, and now you have to grab the basket, take it somewhere private, and take the credits, because they're yours. You stole the credits. The entire time you're doing this, gamblers are just sitting there none the wiser. Uh, <laughs> like, imagine trying this in real life. It's not gonna go over well, period. But as long as you didn't actually touch any of the credits while anyone's around to see it, you're clear. These credits are not worth that much money, but uh, hey, that's a fun trick. At number five, there are two developer rooms you can visit. Every recent Bethesda game has some kind of developer room, a place where they test different objects and different effects or items, etc. Starfield's no different, and it doesn't just have one. The first, most obvious dev room is, I mean, it's the same as Fallout 4's. To access it, you type in COC Quest Smoke in the console. Oh yeah, obviously you gotta do this on PC. It's sort of a bust, because there's not a lot to see here other than this janky effects generator that barely seems to work. Even turning on no clips kind of a waste here because there's nothing inside or outside of this place. It's just kind of interesting to see just because of how weird it is. But the real money is in the second developer room. This one is found by typing in COC Vincent Test Cell in the console and it's considerably more interesting. It spawns you into this one room with a lot of random objects. There's a ton of parts, food, random doodads. They're all scattered around and there's a few mostly empty chests in the room. Unfortunately, you're not going to find every item in the game here like in Fallout 4, but at least you can get every artifact off this wall. That's going to save you some time. Turning on no clip here actually has a point as well. There are a few other rooms you can explore other than this one by doing that, even if there's not much to see in them. For some reason, there are three old buildings in the distance and entirely black. Maybe they're there for scale. I don't really know, but it's a cool place to explore and a great place to just pick things up and cause a mess when you're done because these tables are just wall to wall packed with stuff to throw around. At number four is using an alternative jetpack boost. I'm crediting Uxlapluga on Reddit for this one. I'm not sure if they're actually the person who found it, but there's no way in hell I would have figured this out without them. As you're probably aware, jetpacks are pretty useful for exploration, but if you want to speed up your movement, they're not really good. Kind of more of a negative than a positive. That is, unless you use this, which involves binding a key to the alt function of your standard jump. If you press that, instead of getting boosted straight up like normal, you get propelled forward, which can make exploring planets or getting around big empty cities like New Atlantis way easier. Why is this possible? Possible and why isn't it something you can do normally? I don't know. Because it can only be binded to the alt jump, so there's no way to trick it on consoles, at least not yet, which is a shame because it really does increase your movement speed by a significant amount. And all you have to do is just press a different button while jumping. And number three is finding the secret chests from the vendors. Uh, ever wonder where the vendors keep all their stuff? If you try to steal from them directly, they usually have a few things on them, not their entire store inventory. So where is that stuff actually hiding? Not far, as you will soon see. If you want to access all those credits and all that stuff, type in TCL into the console to turn on no clip. Then look down, go under the world, and you'll find a chest nearby the vendor with their entire inventory and credits all right there for the taking. That's how the game does it. They store a physical chest with the vendor's inventory somewhere near 
nearby, just under the world where you can't normally see it. In contrast to most of these tricks, you can actually find some of these vendor chests on console with some clever tricks to get under the world. Uh, New Atlantis seems like it's especially easy to get out of bounds. Everyone's got these things, even ship technicians, who also happen to have way more money than everybody else. So if you're stealing just for money, this, this is probably maybe a little superfluous. You can cheat however many credits you want. Like you're already cheating on the console anyway. But for console players who are going through the trouble of getting under the world, the technicians are the best ones to go for. They have got crazy amounts of cash. And number two is building a mostly unbeatable ship. One weird quirk of the space combat system in Starfield is that everybody, and I mean everybody, will shoot at the center mass of your ship. Doesn't matter if your ship is mostly not centered, that's where they're gonna shoot. And that's led to some pretty ugly looking ships. Like there's a lot of this stuff out there and it's all, it's all amazing. I had to try my hand at it. Ship building is already fairly fiddly. So when you're trying to push the very limits of what's possible, it's gonna take a little time to figure that out. Start it out with the basic L-shaped ship. That's a, actually all you need here. A tall ship with a long side will do the trick because most of them are going to shoot in the wrong place when you fight them. You'll still get hit. It's just much less. Almost nothing can hit you because they're all trying to shoot the center mass and there is no center mass. At least not in the way that they're finding center mass. I, like if these objects actually had mass, they would absolutely have center mass. But that's that's whatever. I went all out with my second attempt. Uh, it was basically a hollow square lined with guns. It's a killing machine and enemy ships really struggle to hit it. Like look at all those shots are just flying through the middle of this thing. It's hilarious. Bizarre, but it, it really does work work. And finally, at number one, wearing the ultimate helmet. Yes, putting buckets on people's heads is truly a Skyrim classic, and it no longer works here to mask your illicit activity. It does still serve a purpose, though, in Starfield. Credit to this one goes to Mysterious Crew 8580, who found what is most clearly the perfect headwear in the game. Drop a bucket on a guy's head, he's got the ultimate protection. No matter what you use, nothing is penetrating that bucket. It is an adamantium bucket and cannot be damaged in any way. A metal bucket? I mean, it almost makes sense. But what about a plastic bucket? Ah, works too. What about a cardboard box? Oh, you can't shoot through that either? Interesting, because I don't think of cardboard when I think of the ultimate protection, but uh, yeah. Obviously, you can't shoot through physics objects in Starfield. But watching a cardboard box, of all things, protect this guy's head better than a heavily armored helmet is something to see. It's just a shame that you can't put a bucket on your own head so you can be unstoppable as well. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. And we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.